Hello, Einstein. More often than not, geometry problems will be accompanied with figures, and those figures, a couple of which are shown here, will include more than one shape mixed together. Importantly, those shapes might share a side or an angle, and understanding information given on one shape might help calculate the answer to the question, which will be in regards to the other shape. So, for example, we have embedded within a parallelogram here, perhaps a special three, four, five triangle, which will help you determine the area of a parallelogram or a triangle or connect the two different shapes in some form or fashion. Here, perhaps, you might have a diameter of a circle which shares the diagonal of a square, and that in turn will help you calculate some area or perimeter within those two shapes when you can relate the information from the circle to the square. In this case, the circle and the triangle might share a radius, and that might be critical to determining the area shown in blue. Or the height of the triangle embedded in this shape might simply be the side length and if one piece of information is given, knowing what you know about the two different shapes, you can calculate the information required to answer the question about the other shape. So take note of this and always be on the lookout for the two different potential shapes that we've seen and you'll come across in this course and leverage the one to help you answer the question about the other. Because most of the diagrams or geometry problems with figures will incorporate this concept. Special triangles, special triangles, special triangles. Really, to be more specific, we should be saying special right triangles. Usually, the glue that connects the two different shapes, more often than not, seems to be some form of a special triangle. So I thought it might be worth a couple minutes just to review these special triangles again. You're probably familiar with them. A couple you may not be. In either case, it's very useful to know all of them. The Big Daddy, or most common of all the special triangles used on the exam, is the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. If I know three of the four pertinent pieces of information, for example, I know the three sides of a triangle are a 3, 4, with a hypotenuse side length of 5, that must be a right triangle. Alternatively, if I know my hypotenuse is 5, or some multiple thereof, and my side proportionally is 4, and it's a right triangle, given those three pieces of information, I know the missing side must be 3. That is the essence of a 3, 4, 5 tri right triangle. Knowing any three bits of those information is enough to solve the fourth part. As you might know, uh, right triangles comply with the Pythagorean theorem. So on a 3, 4, 5 triangle, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals the hypotenuse length squared, which is 9 plus 16 equals 25. And importantly, the 3, 4, 5 triangle lengths might be scaled in any amount. You may not see a length 3, 4, or 5 specifically on the exam. You could, for example, see 9, 12, and 15, where the proportions are the same, 3, 4, 5, but each side is scaled. In this case, it's three times the basic three, four, five triangle. There are a few others that seem to crop up their head more often than not nowadays. For example, the five, 12, 13 right triangle. Not as well known, but it is a standard right triangle and the same idea holds for it. It complies with the Pythagorean theorem. Five squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. 25 plus 144 is 169. It is a right triangle, and if I know three of the four pieces of information, I can solve for the other. So if I know I have side lengths five and 12 on a right triangle, my hypotenuse must be 13. Or alternatively, if I just know sides five, 13, and 12 are the side lengths of my triangle, I know side five and 12 must have a right angle between them. Again, it is also scalable. You could see it in, say, proportions of 10, 24, 26, which is two times the 5, 12, 13 side lengths. They are in proportion and still, therefore, a 5, 12, 13. And that's true of any of the special right triangles. Two other special right triangles really hail from trigonometry. So you might say you're not as likely to see them but more often than not, I'm starting to see them in practice problems, and it's possible you could see them on the exam. These triangles include a 
an isosceles triangle with unit side lengths and 45 degree angles opposite the right angle and the hypotenuse therefore is the square root of 2 because by Pythagorean theorem 1 squared plus 1 squared equals 2 and the square root of 2 is the length of that following hypotenuse. So that might be worth knowing. In this case they might actually give you the angles within the triangle and tell you it's an isosceles triangle and provide some part of that information for you to solve for another part of the information. You might deduce with knowing that it's a 45 degree isosceles triangle and I have a certain hypotenuse, I can therefore deduce what my side lengths will be. Alternatively, the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle is another special right triangle whose side lengths are 1 half opposite the 30 degree angle and square root of 3 over 2 opposite the 60 degree angle. Again, the information might provided might include the angles in this case, unlike the first two special triangles we saw, and some combination of hypotenuse and or side lengths or scaled side lengths given. In either case, they will be considered special right triangles. So if I see a problem where I have a side length of a half, a side length of square root 3 over 2, and a 30 degree angle opposite on a right triangle, I will know my hypotenuse length is 1. The exam might embed that within other shapes and provide just enough information to solve for the balance. In all, these are the four special triangles. You may have seen them before, but it's worth reviewing, and you know and memorize them for the exam because, as I mentioned, more often than not, they will be the glue that will connect the two or more shapes provided in typical figures, and knowing your special triangles will be the key to solving the problem. Good luck. I hope this helps.